all this stuff okay we have to automate it so how to do the automation okay so when it comes to automation right so you just think practically like you know what you have been doing from the for deployment okay so first so I'm, I'm not considering the build part here guys okay I'm just concerned from the deployment section only because build anyway we automated we are ultimately getting the warfare and all that is already automated we know you don't do anything else okay so we, let's try to concentrate only on the deployment section okay in the deployment section first thing is uh, I uh, identify build server okay identify build server okay and you have to perform everything in the build server only okay see right now you have one server application server tomorrow you have 100 servers are there to deploy okay copying into 100 servers performing the configurations bringing up bringing down the servers taking the backups is really really tedious job for us if the number of servers are increasing if the number of artifacts are increasing okay right now there are very few and it's pretty easy even through manual also okay but if the complexity is increasing number of servers are increasing so manually doing it is quite impossible it's not impossible it's quite tedious and error prone job okay so for that we have to come up with an approach so that's what i'm trying to list down the things now identify the build server next what are the things we are doing okay bring down the services okay this is one main function and next next thing is uh deployment okay so in this deployment i need to perform the db deployment okay and app deployment right and next thing is bring up services okay or and one one more is the backup the deployment okay so most of the time okay you will be performing all these things guys. okay so when you're performing all these things why can't i write a shell script or some Perl script or shell script okay where the script can automatically do all this stuff one by one sequentially okay so because you are doing it sequentially right even the script which, which you write it right that also does the same thing okay so why can't we write that okay so for that i'm going to write a small shell script okay which is going to perform all the stuff okay and that shell script i need to write in my build machine because i'm executing everything from the build machine guys okay so let's try to write a small shell script here and this is going to be a deployment framework i'm just trying to increase the font guys okay so you are in the lead app right so try to open a, file, a script called deploy.sh okay so the first line I'm saying lead app deployment okay so lead app deployment uh, is going to be my heading of the script and now what I will do uh, let me first uh, see what is the first service which will write it okay Identify is already done. We are then so bring down the services. How do I bring down the services in a remote machine by sitting here? Okay, so just say this file. I'm not writing any code, guys. Okay, so say this file. So how do I bring down the servers by sitting here? Okay, it's something like you know I need to run the shutdown.sh script in the remote machine. Okay, by sitting on the build server. So how to do that? If you remember my SSH command, with the help of SSH, right, you can run the commands in the remote machine. Okay, so we can perform the same thing root at the date 192.168.133.129. And you can perform any command. Let me do the df -h command then. Okay, and asking for the password adapt. Look at this. This df -h is performing in the remote machine, yes, not here. Okay, now similarly, I wanted to shut down the Tomcat there. Okay, so just take the path of your tomcat okay so this is what the path of your tomcat and shutdown order search right just put it as here and sh okay so please cross check guys is your process running out there or not okay ps hyphen f tomcat yes my tomcat is running now okay now come to your build machine run this command red hat right now come back here and cross check tomcat is not running so nothing but 
my SSH command successfully shut down the remote Tomcat okay with the help of this command so whatever the things which you do it right always play around on the console like this once you have a logic or an idea how to perform a task then go to your script okay in my script now what I will do it okay okay oh, I will write a simple function okay saying like you know stop Tomcat okay and here I mention stopping the Tomcat server okay and I'll just paste that command that's it okay now once you paste this command and you once you stop it right okay we are, we are pretty good with this okay I'm done with one functionality guys okay and similarly you can do even starting also for starting also it's not some big logic it's the same logic guys okay you write one more function there okay and say see why I'm putting everything in function is I want every task as in a kind of a module okay so that I can call them as per my wish later okay so starting the Tomcat server okay when it comes to starting it is not shadow.sh it is a startup.sh okay right now if you want to cross check whether your functions are running fine or not you can perform it okay you start your Tomcat just save it okay now run sh deploy.sh okay look at this guys is your Tomcat running here no right I'm running my deploy script okay there's something went wrong guys uh, 17 line number yeah there's a spelling mistake in the oh, okay yeah thanks guys yeah start Tomcat look at this uh, it's asking for the password I'm fed up with this password and all, always asking the password. Think about you connected to the remote server 10 times, okay? There are 10 servers. So do you think I need to provide 100 times the password? That doesn't make sense, right? So I want to avoid the situation. So before avoiding that situation, I want to cross-check whether it really started Tomcat or not. Could you please cross-check Tomcat is started, okay? So I got a logic now, what to do it next, okay? So my SSH comma, with the help of SSH, I can run the remote thing, okay? By sitting on my machine itself. So it can be one server or 100 server, doesn't matter. I'll just start to like you know, do everything from a build machine, okay? But only hurdle which I see it is every time I need to enter the password. So to avoid entering the password every time to the remote machines, okay? There is a concept called auto SSH in Linux, guys, okay? So what do you mean by auto SSH is? I'll explain in that concept, okay? Auto SSH, okay? So what do you mean by this is it will not ask you any password once you enable auto SSH from a source machine to destination machine, okay? So to do this, there are certain steps are there. I'll show you those steps how to enable it. And this is one time, guys. Once you enable auto SSH, right? It will never ask you the password again to you, okay? Automatically, it will perform all the commands without any talk password prompt okay so how to do that so I have few uh, one document to perform that it's pretty simple guys auto search look at this document it's, uh, you first log into your source server guys okay see source nothing but where you wanted to run the commands okay so log into source server create a directory called dot ssh okay let's try to perform those steps my source server is the black screen the build machine right so at the home location you be there at the home location try to create a directory called dot ssh seems to be already there guys I'll remove the dot ssh for your sake uh, uh, okay ssh I just removed it I'm creating it again dot ssh now go into the dot ssh guys right I'm there in the dot ssh you follow the document you don't remember anything it's a one-time job run this command this command will generate a public and private key guys okay it will generate a public and private key by using an algorithm called RSA algorithm okay so just enter don't enter any password just blindly enter three times one two three that's it okay so when you enter three times it will create two files one is id underscore RSA another is a id underscore RSA pub this is a public key this is a private key so always remember you need to copy the public key guys the public key will look like this you cat the file can you see this key so keep this key with you now look at the documentation so the above command creates the pop file you're to you're good till here now log into your destination machine okay so, so what is our destination machine 
129 my white screen machine the my this is what my application server or which other server your destination server so here also you try to create a folder called dot ssh at home okay so at home i have created dot ssh now go into dot ssh right so i went into dot ssh okay once you enter into dot ssh see enter into it and he's saying create a file called authorized keys copy this okay we i am authorized keys open this file it's an empty file new file now what you're supposed to do to whatever the public key which you created here in your source machine copy that public key left click copy and here you just paste it guys that's it and save it finish your auto ssh is done if you really want to cross check whether auto ssh is working fine or not you perform an ssh command ssh root at the date 192 168 133 dot 129 and i want to run a command called ps uh, aef okay grep tomcat this will show you whether tomcat is running fine or not but before showing that it should ask you a password right look at this first time it will ask you yes you just yes not password guys is it asking any password now and cross check again entry can you see it's showing okay so i wanted to shut down the tomcat now by sitting here okay so i, I want to run this i can run my script actually okay so open your deploy.sh okay you are the, the deploy script in the lead app guys we are deploy.sh now this time i don't want to start uh, i want to stop it actually okay stop down here. right now sh deploy.sh look at this it is stopping the server it is not even asking any password from okay so that is enough that is what the advantage of the auto ssh where you know to enter any password your script is pretty faster and you can complete not one server hundred source also you can enable auto ssh yeah somebody asking some question i'm getting some noise i'm getting some noise yeah i have a question here yes okay actually for example uh, you mean to say the every building every application server db server has it's one user, am I right? For every build user, build, build engineer, am I right? User ID and password. Yes, of course. Yeah. Okay, for example, if build engineer change, for example, if a new person comes, okay. then again he needs to run this same thing. Okay, let, let me tell you one thing. We don't do the deployments with the build user account. We will be having a common account for the deployments. Okay? Don't call it as a root account, you take it as a Harry account, I mean some deploy account, okay? Everybody does deployments with only single account, not with uh, their own personal accounts. We have to sudo with that their account. Okay. You need to log in with your account, like Chiranjeevi account I log in, but I'll sudo to the deployment accounts and I do the deployment with deployment account only, not with my account. Okay? Yeah. Okay, so now so i'm just uh, done 20 20 percent of my script not much okay so let's try to finish all the modules guys chiranjeev chiranjeev yeah. before chiranjeev before before moving what was the question he asked can you say question and answer also i okay. did not got yeah fine. he said that if there are multiple developers then yeah it's not about multiple developers think about we are a team three people in the build team itself okay so uh, as he's saying three people will be having three different Linux accounts. Yeah, in few companies, they are very secure and all. They they will not provide you kind of like the one account to everyone. They provide the individual accounts. Like Chiranjeevi itself will be having Chiranjeevi account. And uh, like, you know, Ravi itself is having Ravi account. Okay. And Kiran is having Kiran account. So they log in with their account to the build machine. Okay. Now once they log in to the build machine, it's my account. Okay. I don't see uh, uh, root here or deploy here. I see my account. but if you do it with your, your account, right, auto SSH will not work because you have to make auto SSH to your account. So if you want to make it with your account, only the deployment will run with your account only. If Ravi logs in, it will not done. Again, you need to make auto SSH. So how many auto SSH you will make it? There are too many, like one guy resigned, another guy is joined. Again, you need to enable auto. So instead of having multiple account for deployment, what we do is we create a common account, okay? And we won't be logging, I mean, that account will not be having any password, guys, okay? So we will be giving a kind of a passwordless account. Nothing but you have to log in with your account only, but you have to switch it to the deploy account, okay? So once you switch it to the deploy account and you perform the deployments with that, and we enable auto SS with the deploy only, so that every build engineer who logs in, right, okay, they have to switch it to deploy account and they have to perform the deployment. They are not supposed to do the deployments with their account. 
that's what his question okay thank you okay now we are deployed our search fine so we are good with the stopping starting and all okay now i wanted to enhance uh, the features like you know if you look at my all the steps and all we'll try to write the logic for rest of them as well okay so bringing down bringing up is fine okay now i want to take the backup okay so how to take the backup function i'm just writing on function backup back of the lead up work file i'm not writing the logic right away guys let's write the uh, all the functions okay then we can come and write the logic later and then db deployment okay I'm just putting the skeleton. That's it. Okay. I'm not doing exact uh, logic action. Uh, the DB deployment start. Okay. I've deployed. I just prepare my skeleton okay now I need to write the logic okay so when it, when it comes to logic you just play around on your console and once you find a solution just come over here write that logic okay I'm just saving this file guys for right now now my question was how to take the backup okay what do you mean by backup first here okay so when it goes to application server every activity which you do it right think it manually then automate it okay now you are an Apache Tomcat web apps location backup what I mean to say is whatever the war file which you have it you delete it from here move it to somewhere else okay so what are the steps so let me try to create a directory called hyphen p uh, root a directory called backup okay i just create a directory and move lead app okay dot war to the uh, root back that's it and when you move the lead app right okay you don't want the extracted lead app you can delete that if you clearly look at this how many statements you write actually three statements okay so these three statements you can put it in a uh, from this machine itself you can run all these three statements like this ssh okay root at the date 192.168.133.129 okay and in single quotes or double quotes so first what you're doing it creating the directory okay mostly like you know, creating the directory is a one-time job guys okay it's, it need not be part of the script so you're doing this when you're doing the, these things from the remote machine, right? Never give the relative paths always, okay? So you have to give the absolute path. What do you mean by absolute is? Where, where exactly are there inside the web app? So you have to provide the absolute path of your lead app, okay? Right, so provide the absolute path, right? Now once you're done with that, you need to remove the extracted folder, right? So give a semicolon and run the command, rm-rf lead app, okay? So again, when you're giving the rm-rf lead app, so what you're supposed to do, you have to provide the absolute path from here till the web apps. Okay. Right Just enter. It's performing it. But the thing is, it uh, see, it cannot start. Okay, there's no warfare actually. You already took the backup, right? So that's what it is. It is saying there's no warfare and all. Okay. Now, thing is, I need to move the war only if it exists. Otherwise, it's error actually. If you see the dollar question mark. Okay, SSH is fine, but internal command is wrong, guys. Okay, but I don't want to see these kind of errors. Okay, if the war is there, I want to move it. So, if the war is there, if you want to move it, right? So, how you do that? Look at this. You come to this uh, section, you can write an if statements on the fly in the console itself. If you remember hyphen f command, which file exists or not. Okay, so what I will do it, I'll take up this one. If this file is there, okay then what I will do 
mv the command whatever you are doing it okay mv this one to root right and then f1 finish so it is not doing anything the reason it is the var is not there okay so now what i will do mv i'll keep it back i mean the file i'll just keep it at the same location now from the backup What happened? Oh, we didn't create any backup folders. Okay, MKDL backup. Okay. Uh, okay, sorry guys. I need to check it here, right? Okay. So we moved it here. Now keep it back that root backup linear work and just copy it. Now this time I have a war file, right? Okay. So let's try to run the if statement. Run this if statement. Can you see it's it's moved now? If you want, you can cross check it. There's no lead up bar. So now what I will do it, whatever the if statements I prepared here, right? This if statement, I, I'll come to my build machine in my SSH. Okay. So in my SSH here. I'll remove this. I'll just keep that. That's it, right? So if I keep if I keep this side, same command is running on my remote machine. Okay. Now the entire command. Okay. I'm going to copy. Okay. Keep it in mind. We are deployed out of search. Right. Okay. So this is how I can finish a logic to my backup folder. Okay, fine. Next, uh, I want to perform the DB deploy now. Okay, now what you do it in the DB deploy? Okay, so first thing is you need to copy your schema.sql file. So how do I copy a file from my source machines to the remote machine? So as you know, SCP is a command, nice command which works, and go to the source database schema.sql to the remote machine. Okay, so before copying, please cross check guys whether it is having the valid data. See, yes, everything is good. So SCP now to remove okay you just copy to the Apache Tomcat or Tomcat location some location you can copy it anywhere you just copy there and try to provide the syntax properly you have to mention your user at the date the IP address colon this and this is successfully copied that's it so once it is copied take this command and put it into your deploy.sh okay right if you want you can cross check there in the server can you see schema or sql here okay inside the tomcat 7 right it's copied but your deployment is not done with that okay you you, you need to perform execution of the sql script okay how do you perform the execution of sql my sql hyphen u uh, lead app hyphen p lead app at the rate 1 to 3 okay lead app DB, okay then you need to get the absolute path of it schema not sql you run this then your db deployment is done now the same query whatever i run it here i run it from here with the help of ssh root at the date 192.168.133.129 okay and in single quotes or double quotes okay you put that command this is also doing the db deployment so Copy this, okay, and VM deployed search. Now, once copying is done, you run this command so that your deployment is good, okay. Fine. Next, now I'm done with the DB deployment logic, okay. Now let's come back to the app deployment, please, okay. So app deployment is pretty straightforward. You don't run any command. You just start to do the SCP. Copy the war file there. So SCP dist lib lead app dot war okay to the remote uh, server this is what your server and uh, inside the web apps okay just do this copy it fine just copy the command okay finish right okay this will copy the war file there 
okay and you have completed the deployment now i have a logic for pretty much all the functionalities okay now i'll write my main program okay in, i told you in the shell scripting we always write the functions first then the main program okay now i'm coming back to my main program let me write my main program okay now for my main program i'll take one command and input guys okay if dollar hash is equal to one what do you mean by this? I'm going to pass a parameter called deploy. Okay, so case dollar one in nothing what I'm reading the command line parameter. Okay, if my case I mean the parameter is deploy. Okay, if it is a deploy, what I will do it? I'll first call stop tomcat. Okay, right then uh, backup. Okay, then DB deploy, then I'm calling the functions if it is a deploy, okay, app deploy, okay, then start on get, right, so I'm done with everything now, now semicolon, okay, with this we have to, I'm done with the deployment, now in case somebody may ask you, I don't want to do the deployment, I want to just restart the my Tomcat, okay, so I'll take one more function, uh, one more parameter restart, if I'm passing restart to my script, I'll just call only Tomcat1, stopping Tomcat, and starting Tomcat. Okay, at the end you put the semicolon. Now you should understand proper functions advantage, reusability. We are using the same functionalities. Okay, somebody may ask you, could you please perform the DB deployment? If they pass you DB deployment, right, I can just call a DB deploy function. That's it. Right? And I'm pretty much done. If anybody is passing other than these three inputs, okay, I would tell him like, you know, you have entered, entered a wrong operation, something like this, okay. Now, your case ends with isac, okay, and then if you are not passing even a single input, okay, in an else block, I would say echo usage of my script. Usage is going to be sh, deploy.sh, you pass a parameter deploy, okay, and enter so this is how you need to use it that's what my main program okay and you save this script sh deploy dot sh i entered can you can you see this what happened oh uh, it's unnecessary entry. okay i understand yes we forgot to delete the uh, what do you call at the end we have some stop tomcat right delete this Okay, fine. Now, SS deployed. Can you see this? If you don't provide any parameter to your deployed or SS, it will not uh, do anything else. Okay, it will just simply uh, proceed saying like, you know, this is how you need to use it. Now, a layman can easily understand, okay, I have to pass the deploy parameter. Now, I'll give a deploy point. And look at this. It is stopping the servers and some exception. I know why the exception showing because the server is always stopped. If you try to stop it again, it will throw exception. Okay, so first it is stopping, next it is taking the backup, next it is deploying the DB, next it is deploying the war, next it is starting. That's it, okay. If you really want to cross check your application, you can check it guys. See your app is working and try to log in. Right? See, no records, nothing but empty database. We dropped it and we deployed. We don't have any records of here. If you want, you can create one record here. Uh, submit, right? So it is successfully deployed. Now the thing is, I wanted to do the redeployment guys. When you do the redeployment, it's pretty faster. Like think about how, how much time you spent if you wanted to do the copying the artifacts, deploying and all. And now you see the time, how much time it takes. Okay, if you want to capture the time, right, I can do one thing. Deploy.sh, okay. We I am. De Deploy.sh script, okay. So when the script is starting it, right, what I will do it. Uh, echo. Uh, start time okay I just mentioned in back quotes date right 
take nothing but I'm running a command on the console and fetching the data that will print you the data now and once you have done right after the case statement and I'll put the same thing okay I would say end time right and remember one thing guys always when you're stopping the server and starting the server right you better give some delay otherwise what will happen you know things are pretty fast right but your stopping server will take some time starting will take some time so what I will do in my functions okay I'll put uh, at least a two seconds delay okay so that the stopping will happen properly even the starting will happen properly two seconds delay here, okay so just do that for me for the uh, application server and operations okay now you run your script. So when your uh, uh, start time is uh, 2.10 IST. This is what my time right now. And let's see when it is finished. Can you see 2.10.0008. In 8 seconds, it is successfully finished entire my deployment. If you really want to cross check, you check your application here. Okay. Uh, just remove this and try to log in again. Log in. Can you see? empty set here new deployment this is guys okay so this is how you can automate a sample application entire build i mean entire deployment application uh, bringing um services bring down bring up and all okay and database deployment app deployment okay so only thing is this script will do only for this application only for one server if complexity is increasing you just start to keep change your script and make it more, more robust okay so this is how we write the deployment automation script do you have any queries still now Yes. Yeah, actually, I uh, have seen some of the your, uh, your voice is your, your voice is not having clarity. Can you speak a little bit louder? Yeah, can you hear me, right? Yeah. Yeah, I have seen some of the your presentation. Yeah. Uh, yeah, actually, I have seen some of the exit dollar one dollar zero status like whether the command is successfully executed or not. I'm coming there. My question was, do you have any questions with this script? I didn't ask anything other than that. Okay. Are you clear with the current script? No. Okay. Okay. Now, we'll try to enhance the script more robust. Nothing but, I'll give you one problem here now. Okay. Uh, PS hyphen AF grip tomcat. Okay. So, kill minus nine kill all Java. You just stopped all the Java process. You try to do the deployment. Look at this. It is throwing an error. Okay. Uh, not an error. An exception. What exactly this exception is? Your Tom, uh, can you please keep yourself in mute? Okay. Yeah. So what exactly happening here? Uh, it is throwing an error. Okay. This exception is because the Tomcat is already stopped. You're trying to do the stopping again. Okay. But it is not record actually. So, and it, it is it is not looking no, it is not looking good over here if you try to do this. Okay. So to avoid this, what you can do it, you first cross check the Java process or Tomcat process. If it is running, then only you stop it. Right. That is the best way instead of like you know blindly uh, bringing it down. Okay. So for that, I can enhance my script something like this. We I am deployed or session in my stop Tomcat, right? Okay. So how do you cross check whether your Tomcat server is running fine or not? Okay. So go back here. PS hyphen AF grab. Okay. Tomcat. Okay. Now it is running here. Okay. I can see the process, right? So echo dollar question mark fun zero. Now kill all minus nine. Kill all Java. Okay. Now this time it's not there okay echo dollar question one it's one you you got it right so the if the process is not there the status is going to be one now this logic I can introduce it over here okay the thing is if Okay, before doing this, I want to do it from the console first because I don't want to disturb my script, which is a stable script. SSH root at the date 192.168.146. Sorry, 133.129. Okay, PS hyphen AF grab Tomcat. Okay, 
equal dollar question mark okay see here actually it is giving zero actually in this machine it is one right if you see this it's zero right now let's try to like you know grab it okay it, what happened yes hyphen okay so I think this is not so useful guys because this command itself it is treating like a what do you call it, process so it is giving a zero maybe this is not useful for us okay what we can do it uh, I can find other workaround to verify the process okay so I can check the port if the port is open my tomcat process is running is the port open no okay so echo dollar question mark one okay I can make use of this logic instead of that okay net start minus n grab 8080 okay echo dollar question mark one nice okay so this is what I wanted now I'll take up this command I'll open my deploy script here I'll just run this okay and I will do something like this if dollar question mark equal to zero okay then then only I'll perform the stop okay else otherwise I'll print something like you know the tomcat server is already down something like this okay so look at this if you have this kind of uh, uh, logics right what will happen you don't see unnecessary exceptions and even a layman is running the description log you won't be surprised and you won't be shocked by looking at the exceptions log okay now with this logic we'll try to run the script and see now okay now here is your tomcat running let's cross check it's not running okay so it's not running we're trying to stop it right okay ss deploy .ss. i don't do the deploy guys i'll make you of the other function restart which is stop and start okay can you see this the tomcat server is already down okay it is not giving any exception because it is not stopping it okay now second time now this time the tomcat is running guys can you see tomcat running now try to run this script now can you see it is stopping the uh, it will stop the server now because port is open it is stopped it okay and started right so this is how we can avoid some sort of a like you know uh, exceptions or errors in your console log and you make your script much robust now with the help of this concept okay we am the process did you understand I mean how we are making it uh, to stop this see you have to stop only when it is not running I mean only it is running not running okay so if it is running it right you can say like it is already done okay next same thing with the start guys okay so if it is a start right you it's, if the tomcat is already running and you, you, if you try to start it again right what will happen it will throw another again okay, come out now instead of that you should send an alert to the user saying like you know the server is already running okay so if it is already running your job is to like you know stop it and start okay so for that what you can do you can write similar logic here Now, this will give you whether the Tomcat is up and running, okay? So, if it is up and running, it will give you like, you know, zero status, right? So, dollar question mark equal to zero, okay? Then what I can do, it if the Tomcat server is already running, okay? So, what, what I can do, it, I want to stop and start. So, I can just call my stop function, okay? First, then I can call my start, okay? That's it. You don't require any else guys here. Okay. The reason it is here intentionally if it is not running it. If it is running, you're doing this. Okay. Okay. You need else also guys. Because if it is not running, right? Okay, assume the port is not open. You have to start it. So that point of time you just need to do this logic. F right. 
Okay, so this logic will tell you if the Tomcat service is already running, you are stopping it and starting it. Okay, if it is not running, you are blindly starting it. Okay, so this is how you can make this uh, functionality as a kind of little robust one where you don't see any errors and all. Okay, uh, SSH deploy dot SSH restart. Look at it, it is stopping and starting. That's it. Okay, now similarly. What else we can uh, make? Uh, I mean, what else we can do to make this script as much uh, much robust one? Okay, I see one thing here. Uh, the IP address. Tomorrow, think about uh, you changed the server IP. You have to change entire script to like you know with all the IP address. Instead, what I can do it. I'll not hardcore the IP address. Okay, I'll pass the IP address from my main function. Okay, so something like this. If you want to stop the Tomcat, right? Which Tomcat you want to start? Stop. Okay, I wanted to stop this one entry to IP address. So I want to pass IP address as a parameter. Okay, and I wanted to read uh, that IP address there. Okay, in my script. So for every functionality, I want to pass. Okay, instead of doing like this, you can do much better one. Okay, uh, you say server equal to you just mention only once okay and make use of the server variable as a parameter dollar server I'm just passing a parameter to my functions guys okay so right okay now how do you change the things in the every function it's pretty simple you might be thinking how do we change it see if you pass a parameter to your server what's going to be the parameter it's going to be a dollar one guys okay see percentile s this i'll replace it with the dollar one gc replace dollar one replace dollar one 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 Right, don't replace it here. This is what your original one, okay? Your main function. Just save it. How look at this again? Now you look at your entire script now. Okay, there's nowhere uh, hard coded values here. Okay, so everything is with the parameter base. Tomorrow, if your destination server changed, also your script will work properly just by making the server IP change. Okay, so let's try to write, uh, see the deployment once so that we can see any bugs and uh, if if there are any bugs. See, there's no issue at all. Everything is going good. Okay, that's it. And you cross check. Your app is up. Log in. You can log in the application. Right. So this is another enhancement in the script. Remember, guys, always never expect you to write a robust script in the first attempt. You first come up with your solution. Okay. Then that solution, you make it much robust. Like you know, look at all the uh, like this is what like testing your own script okay see what happens if the server IP changes what happens if there are any errors okay what happens so and so file is not there okay so all these things you have to see the uh, issues and fix them with the your alternative options or logics and all like this what are I doing right now okay so that you know ultimately after some time the script will become much a robust one where people can use it without any issues okay and you can easily keep track of the things right so this is a simple uh, automation script to perform the deployment Do you, I mean, are you comfortable with this script right now? How it is the right? All of you? I didn't use anything else other than what I explained to you in the shell scripting. Pretty much all of them you have seen in the shell scripting part. And this is what the like, you know, treated like an application of what you learned. Any queries? Are we good? Ashish, Kiran, Krishna, Prem? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. So let's come to our, what is it? This list, okay? Now, I have performed the deployment automation now, okay? So whatever I showed you manually in the beginning of the session, okay? how much time I spent on it and how I perform all of them. 
and same thing I showed you with the help of a automation that's the power of the scripting is okay so we can uh, do whatever we wanted okay we can keep the things